to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, and I just got to tell you, Cindy and I are here in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We spend half the time here, half the time in Hawaii. But today was just a special day in Cocoa Beach. The waves were not necessarily that big, but they were perfectly formed, uh, glassy, glassy sea. And so uh, Cindy and I paddled out this morning. And that's where she lays in front of me. And we paddle out and catch a wave. And then we drop in and uh, do a bottom turn, and then I lift her over my head, and she does these beautiful uh, acrobatic lifts. Just, just, they're, just, they're just beautiful. And so it's uh, highly recommended uh, if you want to romance your wife to learn how to tandem surf and take her out tandem surfing. But we had a beautiful morning, you know, and we, we spent a lot of time in the water, a lot of time surfing. But I never met the world's most famous waterfall climber before in my whole life. Uh, we, so we have with us as our guest a true waterman, uh, who most people don't know this about him, but Brad Hahn, the CEO of SolidarityHealthShare.org, uh, recently went to the Dominican Republic with his family and two kids, and they climbed waterfalls and then jumped off them. So uh, that's the only reason we're having you on our show today, Brad, by the way. Well, hopefully I can, uh, hopefully I can do some things as great as you do on the water. So I don't know if my waterfall, my waterfall adventure can compare to yours, though, Bear. No, I think it's just so cool because we love it when we see families going on an adventure because you, you really st first of all you went to the Dominican Republic that's already stepping out of the box whose idea was this it was uh, my idea I want to take the kids on a cruise a special cruise so we went to uh, the Dominican Republic for a full day and then I was also able to take a little detour to have it to a cigar factory too which was which was really nice Who, whose factory was it it was uh, Vivante it uh. was uh, a Canadian father's son uh, who set up a shop in Northern Dominican Republic? A beautiful little town. Oh, you know we get, you know, our, our we have our bears some man cave seven virtue cigars, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, they're made in the Dominican, and they're just wonderful, wonderful cigars. But let's not get going down that track. Let's. Talk, I want to talk more about this. I'm all into going and seeing beautiful waterfalls. I can get that. Climbing them, that's a little bit mm, strenuous. But then uh, you jumped off them. That was, was really frightening because uh, we, we ended up jumping off about 13 waterfalls on this trip. And the tallest one was about 25 to 28 feet high. And mind you, you have a helmet on, you have a life, life jacket on and such. But the first one up on the top of the canyon, on top of that waterfall, was my daughter, who's 17 years old now. And she says, Dad, this is too scary. So she got behind me. You go first. And so I knew if I would have chickened out, there is no way she would have jumped off that thing. So I got, up, I got up there, my knees were knocking, I was shaking, I was scared what's going to happen when I jump off of this thing. And I said, I got to do it for my daughter because if I don't do it, there's no way she's going to do it. So I jumped off and my breath went away. I ended up going down like 12 feet underwater, pop back up, and I swim to the side. I look up and here comes my daughter, Claire, jumping off the same cliff. <laughs> and so it, it was good. That so. is a beautiful, beautiful lesson because the father led – uh, and and then the children jumped. Yes, yeah. And my son followed right after her, and it was beautiful because we had a guide. So we were we jumped off the waterfall, then we were able to go through the little river areas for a while, and it was just beautiful there. Was the water real beautiful and clean, or what was it? Like? Yeah, it was clean and clear, and uh, it was really warm too. The water was about 70, 78 degrees, so it was it was, it was beautiful. It, just cool enough to be refreshing, just perfect. Yes, perfect. well, especially. Because initially we had to hike the, to the top of the mountain. It wasn't really a big mountain, but it probably was about a, about a 35 degree angle climb for for a good um, probably about you know 4,000 feet up. And so it was it was a it was a pretty good hike getting Wait, to the how, top. How far did you hike up from where? What it, level to what level? It was probably about from sea level up to about 4,000 feet. You hiked a 4,000. This is in a one day. Yes. To hike 4,000 feet must have taken you close to. What two and a half hours? Yeah, it took us about two hours to get to the top. Wow! And then you so like, that was great because then you were hot, you were overheated. You know, they stopped there. They gave us a nice rum punch. Then it says, "Now let's go hit the waterfall." So it was beautiful coming back down the mountain, 
because we just took, followed the river down and we kind of slid on the rock beds all the way down. No way. That yeah, is it was so beautiful. Cool. Okay, so what did you guys say when you jumped? Did you say Geronimo or something or what? Bonsai or? I was scared to say anything because I was afraid of what was going to come out of my mouth. Yeah. So I just, I just, I was silent. I was so. remembering the other day, I was just thinking about this a few days ago. I, I took a really big wipeout one day in, uh, surfing. The biggest, the first time I felt like I could die surfing. <clears throat> the waves were so big that it was knocking boulders around. And, uh, and I remember paddling for 30 or 40 minutes to get outside. And then I was out, but then I wasn't out because here came the, the, the rogue wave came. And yeah. I remember I was just like, normally you want to paddle and punch through and keep going out. But I was like, this is going to crunch me. And I turned my board towards the beach, which is like you really shouldn't do. And I remember as the wave came down on me, I yelled out the name of Jesus, which, of course, means I had no oxygen in my lungs. <laughs> right. I, did, I forgot to grab a breath. So at least you were smart enough to hold your breath. Yes. But when you jump like that, your stomach really comes up to your throat, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it was. Uh, and right after I did that, I I thought I want to go up and do it again. So really? it was able. To, yeah, I was able to conquer your fear, and then just seeing how brave the kids were following me. It was it was a true true great. There's great nothing moment. more exhilarating than dodging a bullet. They say right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. know we we just shot uh, season three of Long Ride Home out in uh, in Hawaii, and my parish priest, Father Scott Cersey, came with us, and so. Every day of the shoot, we said, so who, who here wants to go skydiving? There's about 16 people involved in the shoot. And they all put their hands up, you know. I want to go. I want to go. Two or three times a day, I would ask them that. Father Scott didn't know that we were setting him up because he really oh. wanted to go. But when we got to the skydiving place that morning, you know, I said, you guys, I got to tell you, really, really pains me to say this, but I suffered a paper cut this morning. I'm not going to be able to jump. And so each one of the guys kind of backed out of the jump, and it was just Father Scott jumping but when you jump out of an airplane you don't get that feeling because you have that elliptical sort of fall it's not the same feeling and you don't see the ground really so you don't have that same feeling of the ground coming up to you so fast when you first jump and then you have that when you jump you have that feeling of that rush coming up to your you know yes. it's, it's a whole different it's a it's a it's it's for some reason it's much more real when you jump from 25 feet you know yeah it's beautiful but I, what i love about that is though what lessons did you teach your children then uh, through that well, I think the big lesson was is just to conquer your fear, number one, and then you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. And so it was just a great bonding experience. And it was just, I think any time you can get your family out in nature, you know, in bond in nature, just to have a good time. Most of our family vacations, we try to do some type of nature element to it. So beautiful. And it's just beautiful to get outdoors because in our society today, we're just so closed in. You know, we're used to you know, traveling in the car from here to here, living in concrete the whole lives. So it's, it's yeah. great to get in touch with God in nature. Well, who was the first one to say, Daddy, are we there yet? Uh, no one. Oh, so that's they so had, cool. <laughs> they, had a, they, had, they had a blast. Well, so. people don't know. We're talking with Brad, Brad Hahn. He is the CEO of SolidarityHealthShare.org. I'll put the .org in. That's their website. And lives in Tempe, Arizona with his wife and two children. I guess I should kind of give him a little bit of your of your – CV here, so I'm going to put my glasses on. Those of you who are watching us on YouTube, you know, this goes out on about 500 EWTN radio stations, but also it's available on the iTunes app, any podcast app, basically, and it's also available on YouTube. So if you want to see what this adventurous uh, waterfall jumper, world-famous waterfall jumper Brad Hahn looks like, but we have the, the basic CV for Brad Hahn, the CEO and Secretary of Solidarity House Chair, uh, Arizona Family Man, and an attorney who founded Solidarity with Chris Fat. Uh, Status. and uh, Brad has a deep commitment to his Catholic faith, and that kind of forges the solidarity values. But I really found interesting he is not only a member of the Arizona Bar, an attorney, but uh, the Canon Law Society of America, the Catholic Medical Association, was a big, which is a really big deal, by the way. That that group, I have one of my best friends, one of our cast members, is a big deal. The president of the, I think the, um, of the Florida or the Orlando chapter. Uh, but what I really dig about this is that you are, uh, you actually worked uh, with the tribunal for uh, the annulment tribunal as an yeah. advocate. And uh, this is something, we've only got a minute here, but this is something that, I mean, before we go to our next segment with you, but this is something Catholics are just like, oh, it's so hard to do and I'll never be able to get an annulment and they just don't go through that process. Uh, so how did you get involved in that? 
Well, I was asked, first of all. So you always have to, any type of commitment you make to the Lord, I think it's great when somebody asks you for that commitment. But what I find uh, most beautiful about the annulment process is that it, it forces people to sit down and evaluate their previous marriage. And I think that's what a true blessing is, because if in retrospect you can sit down and, and think about it, discern what happened in that marriage, identify maybe some of the issues, the patterns of, uh, you know, maybe of some behavior that wasn't acceptable in yourself and also your past spouse, I think it's a great place, number one, is to heal that past relationship. But number two is so you can heal yourself so you can go into your next relationship stronger, you we're know, talking, and, and talking, understand what's going on. We're talking with Brad Hahn, the CEO of Solidarity HealthShare. I'm going to just say the website SolidarityHealthShare.org. And I have him on the show because I've, I've met Brad about three or maybe four times. And his look in his eye when he talks about solidarity, the determination that he has and what he's doing with that health share organization, it just really is where the rubber meets the road. So we're going to be back to talk more with Brad. This is Bear Wozniak. You can find out more about us at deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN Radio. You can also listen to us on iTunes. And if you're really smart, you go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter because every Saturday morning we email you our radio show before it even airs. The YouTube version of it too, by the way. And what we like, what we, why we do that and why we want you to do that is you love the shows first of all, but it's so easy to just click and forward that email to someone you're evangelizing. And our guests are so interesting that people kind of get engaged in the dialogue, and before they know it, uh, the Holy Spirit's kind of sneaking up on them. So we would love to do that. And we, I always forget to tell you, uh, we are leading a pilgrimage to Greece uh, in May. And you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, to join us. Uh, I have been studying the life of St. Paul now for about a year. Every kind of book that I can read, I've been reading even St. John Chrysostom's uh, um, uh, commentary on the book of Acts and read through. Uh, I have a whole 24 volume set on a commentary of the early church fathers, too, all about every book in the Bible. I've been studying those for what they say about his letters and the book of Acts. And so I've become a big Paul aficionado. I don't know if you've heard me on the morning sunrise show with Matt Swaim on Monday mornings at 6 50 a.m. Eastern, but we've been going through the life of St. Paul with him, too. So we are really stoked about going to Greece. We're probably going to have some stand-up paddling involved somewhere, but we're going to go in the footsteps of Paul and uh, go through Thessalonica, Philippi, Athens. Then at some point, we're going to get a cruise ship and go over to Ephesus, you know, the, the great church of Ephesus that he helped uh, with, and uh, where Mary and John were, uh, tradition says, and then the, then the island of Patmos, and then to the island where my wife and I were betrothed, the island of Santorini, uh, just for a day of kind of enjoyment. So go there and... Uh, Come with us on our adventure to, uh, and follow in the footsteps of St. Paul. Go to deepadventure.com and you can join us. So normally when I have guests on my show, uh, I, don't have, I don't normally have a, a world-famous waterfall climber and jumper. But today we have with us the most famous waterfall climber and jumper that I've ever, know, ever met, uh, Brad Hahn, the CEO of SolidarityHealthShare.org. So, uh, Brad, welcome back to... Uh, yes. Bear. The adventure. Yeah, I love this man, and I'll tell you why. I, I know that one of your favorite sayings is from uh, St. Augustine. Uh, I was reading uh, this same quote actually just yesterday, rereading Archbishop Chaput's uh, book, uh, uh, Strangers in a Strange World, I guess, Living in a Post Christian Era. Uh, and you know which quote I'm talking about, where I, I, it was St. Augustine said, the two, the two, I've written it down here, the two, uh, dot, some, Mm. Hope has two daughters. And what are they? You're asking me to finish that? You know it. It's anger and courage. Yes. And what does that mean to you? Well, to me, it's, um, I think a healthy anger uh, is, is good. You know, and I look at it kind of a righteous, healthy anger would be like when uh, Jesus went in and upset the tables, you know, at, at, the, at the temple because they were making a mockery of the temple. And then he had the courage to correct them. And I think that's what we're about here, too, at Solidarity Health Share is I was really outraged at the federal government coming in 
and forcing hundreds of millions of Catholics to pay for things we find morally objectionable, abortion, contraception, sterilization, gender reassignment surgeries and the like. And then I thought I needed the courage to try to make a difference in this world, especially how we try to protect the conscience of, of the faithful. And so to me, it's that those two hopes there are, are beautiful. And so I think if we can temper our anger uh, and use it for the greater glory of God to serve his kingdom, I think it can be a great motivator for us. And I think that's where um, we kind of, as a man, right, to you and me, Bear, we, we kind of have, you know, the flight or fight mentality. You hear that a lot, you know, when you're talking about men. But, but for guys like you and me is I'm not going to flee from a battle like this. You know, if we're equipped and called and equipped with Jesus Christ uh, to stand up for something, he's going to give us the courage, the wisdom, and the knowledge to implement something and to use your anger in the right way. Hey, Brad, you know, on our show, in my, the Bears Man Cave group that we have, too, the private Facebook group, challenging men, challenging men, challenging men, listen to the Holy Spirit, and you get that tap on the shoulder, do something. I remember when Rick Santorum spoke to us, what, a year ago at the Napa Institute, he said, you know why the world, the, earth, the United States is in the condition it is in? And we go, we're like, why? And he's like, it's your fault. You didn't do anything. And when I met Brad Hahn, I met a man. And it, it, and, and, and it never left me. Uh, his, it, his determination and his boldness to do something. You know, what, you know how you can tell what a weak man is, Brad? Is, is a man who doesn't know how to get angry at the right things. Yeah, and I, don't mean, I don't mean mad, I mean angry. Right. Uh, it's to, when, when there's things that we need to be angry about and we don't get angry, it's the sign of an a inner malaise and a sickness and a weakness. And when I, I'm not trying to bolster you, but I just want the audience to know, when I met Brad Hahn, I met a man that had the right anger and the right courage to do something about um, helping out the little sisters of the United States and the whole United States Catholic Church. I mean, that's what the government's trying to make us, right? I think right, the exactly. Washington Post called them the little sisters of the government. When you saw this, and Humana Vitae, St. Paul VI, um, when you saw this and someone tapped you on the shoulder and asked you to help, I believe, that's how it started, this man did something about it. And I want, can you just give us the core of that impetus, that uh, what the challenge was and what the, re, what the response to the call was? Well, as, a, as an entrepreneur my whole life, I've been having my own law practice and practicing law for the last 21 years and, and just seeing the uncertainty, not only in the conscience issues in healthcare, but also how these prices were just getting out of control. So I had a great conversation with my wife and I think a great spouse, a beautiful bride can really give you, make you stand up and courage even stronger. Amen. Knowing, knowing that your, your wife has your back on this too and in very an encouraging way. You know, uh, Brad, go take that mountain. And she just basically summed it up. I said, uh, Julie, you know, technically it's not cooperating evil when you have health insurance because it would be the remote cooperation evil. And she just looked at me boldly and said, Brad, that's just a, a pharisaical argument. You know, my family and we are not paying for this, these amoral issues when it comes to funding our health care. And you need to do something about it. And you what know, are those issues? What are the things that that rise of the surface that brought that yeah, determination. Yeah, it makes it, it makes, it makes us fund uh, contraception, sterilization, uh, abortifacients, and abortion. And so that's what we're forced to cooperate with when it comes to funding healthcare in this country. And but so you, that's, what re, that's what really got Julie, um, got Julia had righteous anger as well, which really motivated me then to, uh, to really step up and try to find a solution for those Catholics out there, those faithful Catholic families that are trying to do the right thing. You said something to me. This is when I first turned around and I, and I thought, ah, oh, this is a man. Because you know, when you're in those meetings, you meet a lot of people. And everyone that you meet is so awesome and so good. But you said something about a bishop had been telling you a, a situation about how they were forced to use insurance that had these sort of things in it. And you made a statement to me. Do you remember what you said about what you expected yeah. the bishops? Yeah, I, I was in a meeting with a couple bishops, and, and basically the, the conversation went like this. Well, uh, Brad, what do you expect? You know, the government's forcing us to, to have abortion coverage in, in our health plans. And I said, with all due respect, I expect the bishops, the priests in this country, to stand up and be imprisoned, maybe even be martyred, 
before they cooperate in an amoral act of killing another human being through abortion. And I said, with me as a head of solidarity, I expect that I may get thrown in prison someday from our views and how we're trying to protect conscience in this country. And I said, I'm, I'm re willing and ready to go to prison for this because Jesus Christ is, is calling us to something great. And I'm not going to let a government dictate to me uh, and force me to fund things that I find morally objectionable. That goes contrary to his teaching of his church. Okay, let's talk about something. And we got, we're already ready for our next segment almost. One of, the great, one of the fundamental principles of Catholic social teaching, solidarity. It's right there in your name. What does that mean? Yeah, solidarity is a way for us to come together to promote the common good and to basically step out outside of ourselves to reach out and help our brothers and sisters in Christ when they need it. And so that's, that's why, why we, yeah. yeah, that's why we chose the name solidarity is because uh, right now what we're doing at Solidarity Bear, and you're very familiar with this too with your sons, is we're coming together to form a community, a family, where we can come together, not only support ourselves spiritually in a time when we need medical care, but also financially as well. And so that's what it means about solidarity, everybody coming together to support one another for the common good. You know, I dig this guy, Brad Hahn. I just dig him, and I know the people that are committed with him in doing this work. It's a very significant thing. Solidarity Health Share, uh, solidarityhealthshare.org. And on our website, you see a link to them, too. Um, what they're doing is significant. We're going to come back and we're going to talk more about the whole concept of standing up for Humana Vitae, standing up for Catholic moral teaching, standing in solidarity, and, uh, and being bold in, in, in the way we live our faith. This is Bear Wozniak. You can find out more about us at deepadventure.com. We'll be right back with the most famous waterfall hiker and jumper I've ever met, CEO of Solidarity House Share, Brad Hahn. <clears throat> Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite uh, the women out there to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and get a Bear's Man Cave membership for the men in their, in their lives. Uh, Bear's Man Cave is just this unique gathering of men. It's a secret Facebook group, but you can't join it through Facebook. You've got to go to our website. So I, want, I want to invite the women to go there and get a membership for them uh, for their Christmas present. Uh, because there we challenge, we mobilize, we equip men, and every two or three weeks we have this video Zoom meetup where all the men can uh, see each other and talk with each other. And We're going through uh, one of my books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. It's, it's a book designed for small men's groups. And we're mobilizing them and training them to start their own men's group. So what a great place for real men uh, to gather together. And so uh, wives, mothers, uh, uh, get a membership for, your, for your, your men in your life. Or men, why don't you just go get a membership for yourself or for your son and join with us. It's a very dynamic group. We challenge, we encourage, and we get real with each other. And you can do that at deepadventure.com. Uh, we have as our guest Brad Hahn. Uh, it's kind of like he's a bit of a brawler, I think. I wouldn't want to deal with him in a dark alley, I, I don't think. He's got this de look of determination. Uh, he's been slaying dragons for a long time in different areas as an attorney. And he just took on the biggest bully in the block. Uh, and I would say, uh, you know, instead of starting off on a bite-sized chunk, dealing with the oppression of the government towards uh, Catholic moral teaching in terms of a way... Uh, healthcare insurance is working and you think about it the government's the biggest bully on the block uh but so is health insurance itself the whole healthcare industry is is is, is brad what percentage of the economy is 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 the is the health arena yeah it, it's got to be a, it's almost at a quarter of uh 25 percent now of the whole economy okay so, so, yeah. so, and it's getting bigger and so brad when you chose this fight you chose uh, to take on the biggest arena and take on, I don't want to call the U.S. government the biggest bully, but, you know, take on the biggest kid on the block and to deal with this. So tell us more, uh, how is it that Solidarity Health Share is a alternative? It, there's a, a, some sort of grandfather clause or something that you were allowed to, to do. T tell us what the essence of, uh, of Solidarity Health Share is, first of all, then. Yeah, well, well Solidarity Health Share is a, a national not-for-profit ministry. 
And what we do is we do a few things for our membership. The first thing we do is really help our members navigate this whole complex system of healthcare. And so we'll, on that behalf, we try to get fair and reasonable pricing for our members' medical expenses. And then the second thing what we do is after we make sure it's a fair and reasonable price according to some certain parameters and standards we use in the industry, then we help facilitate the payment of that me me member's medical expense among our membership. So I'll give you an example. My, my son Andrew had ankle surgery in May. and uh, the Was bill, it from jumping off of a waterfall? It, it was actually from he played a year and a half on basketball with a fractured ankle. Oh, so wow. it, it's amazing that he did so well his freshman year with what that fractured ankle. What a wimp. What a wimp. He yeah, only lasted yeah. a year and yeah. a half. Well, yeah. I felt badly too, Bear, because I kept saying to him, you know, uh, just go ice it. What are you, a wimp? You know, <laughs> and then, then we realize it's a fracture. So uh, – uh, and so like his surgery was over $60,000. And so could you imagine a family being presented a $60,000 bill? What, what do we do next? Well, thankfully, what our family did is we turned it over to Solidarity HealthShare and they negotiated that down to less than $6,000, that surgery. Then the next step is since it's an eligible medical expense pursuant to our member guidelines and it was more than we pay per month because my family of four, we pay $449 per month. That's our monthly contribution. So what happens then that for that month to make sure those doctors and the provider in the hospital was paid, other families contributed their 449 a month to my family, and then in turn my family was able to pay the providers to pay to pay off the expenses for my son's uh, ankle surgery. So in a big picture, that's how it works. It's a huge thing, and this is not Obamacare. In fact, no. it's, it, this is, but somewhere in a somewhere when that was passed, there was this little grandfather clause that said. Uh, the, these health sharing systems, if they already are in existence, can continue. So you kind of came under an organization with that kind of grandfather clause. Uh, but how many families, by the way, are, are, are signed up for Solidarity now? Yeah, we over, have over uh, 5,100 families now that are participating. And we've shared so far this year to over $6 million worth of medical expenses for those families. And when did you start Solidarity? When was it started, uh, Chris? Well, we've been, I've been working on it for 25 years, Bear. <laughs> you know, my, my whole career, I would say it that way. But it's recently after the Affordable Care Act was passed, some, some Catholic business leaders in Phoenix approached me and said, uh, Brad, we got to do something about the Affordable Care Act. You know, us families are going to be forced to violate our conscience and pay for contraception, sterilization, abortion, abortion-inducing drugs and the like. And then that's when we started the journey about when the Affordable Care Act was passed about almost, wow, it's almost like five, six years ago now. And so then we took our time. We researched this health sharing ministries because a recognized health sharing ministry from the Center for Medicare Services, we're exempt from any of the regulations of insurance. And that's a key point there, Bear, that's because we, yeah, because we can draft our member guidelines to be faithful to the teaching of the church. So Praise our God. members are guaranteed that we don't fund things like, you know, contraception, sterilization, you know, um, any type of sterilization like a vasectomy or, or tubal ligation. So our members are, that's really the number one reason people join Solidarity, in my opinion, is because they know that they're uplifting God in how they pay for their health care. Okay, so you're, so this is the time of year when people make these types of decisions, too. Yeah, exactly, because it's open enrollment, you know, and so um, when people are addressing these issues, a lot of times they're looking for alternatives, and this is what's really comical to me, too, Bear, is they said, Oh, the, the Affordable Care Act, the, the premiums for the Affordable Care Act for the monthly insurance premiums are stabilized. They're only going to go up about 3%. Well, out here in Arizona, they've gone up 161%. So only going up 3%, all of a sudden, it's, it's like a, a victory. Well, to right. me, it's not. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the affordability, the thing is, is I find out, I found out, because I went the alternative route. Um, and, you know, I go to the doctor and they go, your bill is this much. You know, someone right next to me say, okay. Well, this is your bill, but 20% is going to be paid by you, 80% by the insurance or something like that. But that 20% is a ton of money. Oh, yeah. But, but you can talk to that doctor and say, yeah, I'm paying cash. Now how much do I have to pay? And they'll say, well, only 65% or 50% of the, of the bill. So the Solidarity Health Plan with this higher deductible, you have a $1,500 deductible, I think, with your family, you said. Yes. It, it gives you that flexibility to go in yourself and negotiate it, or they can, or Solidarity negotiates it for you. But it's, it's um, I don't know, it's, it, it's just a whole different um, strategy to not only lower your premiums, but to lower the actual bill. No one does yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. For you. Yeah, and, that, and that's, you basically have two choices with healthcare, Bear. 
you can continue, you know, writing your monthly check, you know, to the insurance company, paying a co-pay per visit and have no idea what things cost. Or you can join a health sharing ministry like Solidarity Health Share, where our members, they want to make sure that they get the best price for their medical care because they know if they get a good price on their medical care, their monthly premiums will stay low. And then also, too, is the cost for the, the rest of the community will stay low. And so all right. of our members have a vested interest in trying to do that. And, and it's the, basically the way the structure works is if you go to the hospital and you have a bill, everybody basically chips in to pay that bill for you. Uh, but you do it by way of it's not a premium. It's a contribution, right? Yeah, What's exactly. The, yeah. So but but there, but but it's like solidarity is the conduit for all that. It, in, in, in essence, though, that's what's happening. The other people are when you so when you have a huge bill, uh, it, you know, um, all that is covered by the contributions of others. And then when it's their turn to have a bill, you make the contribution. What's beautiful about it, though, is you set those rates annually, uh, the membership contribution amount, and then you uh, and then it, and then you guys are the conduit to cover, make sure everybody's uh, costs are are qualified expenses. You negotiate the pri the cost down, and then and then cover them. So I, I'm a big believer yeah. in. Well, that's what that's what we try to do, and I think that's what a big benefit with solidarity is. Is right now we're averaging almost a 62 percent discount this year so far in our clients' medical bills. So in and how that how we've set up that system, that's why we can offer an affordable solution to the uh, not so affordable care act. And you do it consistent with Humana Vitae. It's our 50 year anniversary. Saint Paul the Sixth just uh, canonized, and uh, and so. Uh, this, celebrate that by choosing a Catholic approach to healthcare. We're talking with Brad Hahn. He's the CDA, CEO of Solidarity Health Org, which uh, part of my family uh, is, is uh, finds gets their health uh, coverage through the, the Solidarity Health Share. What I love about it, it's solidarity. We're together. We're a community. When we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about that community aspect. Uh, so, where can they find you again if they they want to make a decision to go where, Brad? Yeah, they can reach us online at SolidarityHealthShare.org. That's uh, SolidarityHealthShare.org. Or they can reach us all, uh, by phone at 844-313-4999. And if those of you who have forgotten both of those things, you can go to our, our website, DeepAdventure.com. we got a link right at the bottom of our website for SolidarityHealthShare.org. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with my co-adventure guy today, Brad Hahn, CEO of Solidarity HealthShare. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, our adventure, uh, co my co-adventure guy today is with us, Brad Hahn. He's the CEO of SolidarityHealthShare.org. I've been wanting to get on my show now for well over a year. So I'm fired up that we got him uh, here right at this most critical time when people are making their their health share uh, decisions. And one of the people know too, if you go to our website, we have their, my two books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and Deep in the Wave, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, uh, are available for you there, uh, autographed copies of them. You can, of course, go to Amazon and get them there too. But we have other things there. Uh, we have our, our T-shirts, our Long Ride Home coffee cup, coffee mug, and uh, also we have our, our cigar sampler, our Seven Virtue Cigars, uh, each of the cigars has a beautiful, is a, the four medium blends are based on the four cardinal virtues and the three Maduros are based on the three theological virtues. And when you unpeel the label, underneath that is a quote from one of my books on the virtues. So the, the label is big and long enough, so you have to peel it off in order to enjoy the full cigar. And what that means is you share that with your friend. There's cigars that are meant to be shared with a buddy, and you start talking about something other than football, you start talking about those virtues. And believe it or not, that's actually happening. It's just so cool. But we have, we have Brad, Brad Hahn with us. Brad, um, as CEO of, of SolidarityHealthShare.org, one of the things that I know you do is you do health counseling, too, for people who are maybe not in the, the kind of shape that they wish they were. That's one of the services you pro provide, too. Yeah, exactly. So we've had a lot of families join up that have members of their family that uh, may have high blood pressure, may be overweight, and such, and so what we do then is uh, we try to coach them back to wellness. And so by coaching them back to wellness, then not only are they a better member, but they also feel better. And I'll give you a classic example. My wife's sister, uh, when she joined, she was pre-diabetic and she was overweight. 
She's lost about 25 pounds now and she's running half marathons and she feels great and she looks great. You know, and so that's a, a great member when they can come in and really want to do a lifestyle change. And we want to support them and facilitate that every step of the way. So people that are making a decision, what type of health share uh, they, they should be having, what would be the matrix? What would be the decision matrix? Well, I think the big thing is to decide whether a health sharing ministry is, is right for you, you know, and, uh, and I think it, it is right for many faithful Catholics who are trying to do the right thing and they want to join a community. And so I'll give you a classic example that we had one of our members call in, we were talking to, and he said, well, uh, listen, um, I have a $1,500 medical bill, but I'm not submitting that for sharing, even though it's eligible for sharing among the membership, because uh, the money I've saved by going with Solidarity HealthShare, I want to make this a contribution to Solidarity for people that are less fortunate than I am. And so it's amazing stories like that. People want to give out of the goodness of the heart. They want to help their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to make sure that their health care is, is, is provided in an ethical and fair way, but also that they can financially support that health care decision they want to make. Well, so, you know, the, the reason why you, I have you on my show, Brad, is because something needed to be done and you did something about it. You and Chris Faddis, Fat, Fat, I think I'm saying his name right. Yeah, Faddis. Yes. Yeah, made a decision to do something about it. And the gentleman that, that helped back you up, the business people that helped back this, you did something about it. Solid, uh, the, this area of the government trying to become more and more invasive into our lives and um, the fact that health care is about a fourth of the economy, this is about the biggest, boldest thing that someone could, you, you guys could take on, and I admire you for it. But what is the financial uh, matrix, and how do they make the decision? How do you compare a health share system vis-a-vis -vis health insurance? Well, I don't think you can even come close to comparing the two because it's so, so, it's such a different model, you know, and we're based on a Christian model. So just like in uh, early Christian societies where there was a need or a problem, uh, these, these small Christian Catholic communities would come together. They would support, support one another in the love of Jesus Christ. They would also financially support one another. And that's what we're about. So this model is very distinguishable from an insurance company, right? You know, cause an insurance company brings people in, they analyze the risk, you know, um, they, 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 it's, they're working out for their own self-interest where our members of solidarity, you know, they're working out for the best interests of others too, because that's what solidarity means is, you know, working out with the common good. And that's what we do at solidarity is, um, we're not a for-profit money-making, uh, you know, entity, but we're there to support our members in any way. So what we're looking at constantly is trying to perfect our model, how we share, how we get the best reasonable prices for people and medical care, but also too is how do we look at prescription drugs that are a big problem in this country. So we're gonna be looking at some different solutions there next year as well. So we wanna provide the best, we wanna provide the best opportunity for faithful Catholics who wanna do the right thing and not cooperate in evil acts of abortion, contraception, sterilization and the like. We wanna be there to support them every step of the way. And you know, you said a key thing, faithful Catholic. Right. And uh, I wanna ask you about that part of your life. Uh, you're, 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 I see this, all these books in the background. Uh, I'm curious what, what, you're, what you're reading back there. If you're watching on YouTube, you see part of his library behind us. But what, is, yeah. what about your formation as a Catholic and your growth, growth as a Catholic? Uh, people want to be faithful Catholics, but uh, they want to know there's a faithful Catholic that's, uh, that's championing the cause. Tell us about that. Well, I think the biggest thing is just always be um, self-study. You know, always find programs to study. And, and what a a big conversion I had in my life is going through the, the Bible timeline, you know, with, that with, he, with Jeff Cavins. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that really, that really motivated me kind of to see what happened with the Jews, you know, how they lost their faith every third generation. And then God would come back and chastise and said, Hey, Jews, you got to do three things. You got to educate your kids. You got to, you know, got to build the wall and you got to keep our, our tradition and proper worship in place. And if you look at our society and throughout the Christian culture, you know, every three, every third generation, the church loses its way. It's got to reinvent itself. And that's where we are right now in, in all, the, in all the, the chaos you see in our church right now, all the scandal you see in the church right now. It's up to us laity to be there, to be a strong foothold, to be very supportive of the, the priests, the bishops in our country, to help them any way we can. But most importantly, it's up to us Catholics really to, uh, to support one another 
And that's what I love about solidarity is because we're coming together to support one another because everybody is impacted by health care sooner or later in their lives. This, this uh, Solidarity Health Show, I think, is going to stand alone at some point almost. It's going to be a pinnacle that just stands there for, for, for doing the right thing in the health share area. But going back to the, the Bible timeline, you know, Jeff Cavins has this new Bible, the Great Adventure Bible. I love it. I sent me a copy. I got to write a little something about it. But it, it just, first of all, fits in my hand perfectly, like a, you know, like a gun has to uh, fit perfectly. Or, you know what I mean? It, it perfect, just, right. just love the way it is. And uh, it's just a beautiful timeline. But Jeff and I are going to be riding on motorcycles from Cocoa Beach, Florida, to Alaska next August as part of our long ride home. Oh, so that'll, great. That'll be a bit of a, a little bit of an adventure. You, re- I, you know, I have a book in my hand by your bishop. I believe your bishop is Olmstead, right? Yes, Bishop Olmstead. Yeah, I love this book. It's called Into the Breach. And that's kind of what you were talking about, a uh, call to the wall, uh, re- to rebuild the wall. And right now, right. Uh, in just, just a couple of minutes we have left, what do we do about it? What, what are you doing? What can people do about What is your response to uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity we have in the church right now? Well, I think the, with the opportunity in church, is, um, it, it's a way for us all to perfect in holiness you know, and be very supportive of these priests that are always trying to do the right thing in, in the eyes of God. And so be very supportive of them. And the other thing, too, is, and I'm a firm believer in this, um, find out what you're passionate about. And what gets you excited, you know, about church ministry, about helping others, about where you can serve. And I think God brings a lot of joy in my life. I know one of my prayers the last 20 years is, uh, Lord, wherever you send me to serve you, um, please let me enjoy it and have fun at it. <laughs> right. That's, well, my that's what he's good. At. That's what he's going to do, too. And he does it because he's wired you to do the service that he has for you. But it's always in so many unexpected ways. So many people are involved in ministries that they knew nothing about. And then all of a sudden they're just. They're just launched into it. But in light of the crisis, the last time I saw you, we were in Washington, D.C. Yes. And uh, the morning I saw, I went, went down the, the, that one morning we had together after the, you know, we had the little evening get up, get together. And Cardinal Mueller was standing there in the foyer of the Mayflower, the, 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 the classic Mayflower Hotel. Six foot, what is he, six and 200. And, he's like a ta- starting tackle for the Green yes. Bay Packers or something. And he stood there wearing his um, skull cap. I forget yep. what it's called. And uh, just stood there like a rock. And I just loved that image. I, and I'm spoiled the moment by going up and saying hi to him, you know. But right now when we, we were in D.C., it is time for the laity to step up and take its, and, and, and it, take its servant leadership role. And once again, what you're doing with Solidarity Health Share is about one of the most significant things I can think anybody can do. You know, people are, say they're pro-life, but they're... Their health, health insurance is covering uh, abortion. We're talking right. with uh, Brad Hahn, CEO of SolidarityHealthShirt.org, um, and we're, we've run out of time. Well, the time went fast. It's great, it's great well, having a conversation with you, The Brad. only reason we wanted Brad on is because he just took his family to the Dominican Republic, and they climbed 13 waterfalls, one of them at the 4,000 feet they had to hike from sea level up, yeah. and then jumped off of it. So you've got to have a guy like that on the Bear Wozniak adventure. Until uh, next week, this is Bear Wozniak. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com. Uh, and, uh, and don't forget, we, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. And you know what we say, Brad, is we say, Viva Cristo Rey, the shout of the Cristeros. You see, that's and great. I, and I think this is what we need now during this time with the church. The laity yes. needs to rise up. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 